Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinsel at a time. This is the interview that I have teased for two days. This is the extra special guest. This is something that I think all of us need to hear. Uh, let's welcome Sharon to the show. How are you doing, Sharon? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So you've been on the show a couple of times uh, very early on, probably three years ago, two and a half years ago. Uh, we actually did a trip with your husband, Sean, and my wife, Olivia, out to Fresno. Since then, you guys have moved to Texas, right? Left California, <laughs> moved to Texas, and uh, a lot of stuff going on. So why don't we just catch people up on uh, Sharon and Sean, and then we'll get into really what the meat of the discussion is. Yeah, definitely. So, hey guys, I'm Sharon and I'm a creator and investor. So my husband and I have 32 units. We invest out of state. Uh, my whole story was that I had quit my job and traveled the world for two years while building passive income streams. Um, and now I'm kind of teaching people how to build passive income, create financial freedom for themselves uh, so they can feel unstuck and that there are opportunities out there essentially. Yeah. And what I really remember from our first conversation two and a half years ago, and really that car ride to Fresno and back was uh, that your brand digital nomad, right? That at least in my world, that was a, a concept I had never heard of, never thought about. I'm sure it was out there, but as a, you know, a dad, a full-time tech worker, it, it just wasn't on my radar. And to hear somebody quit their job on purpose to travel the world cheaply and amazingly and build income on that, it was just <laughs> eye opening. So why don't why don't we just remind people of some amazing things you did during that two years? Like how many countries did you see? What was going on during the, and what years were they? Yeah, I traveled all around like Europe and Asia between 2016 to 2018. And I basically did like a month at each place. Um, you know, went to different countries like, you know, Greece, Romania, uh, Portugal, Korea, Thailand, like all over. And I was kind of uh, building passive income streams. So I was like, uh, you know, working on my Etsy shop, blogging, like <laughs> selling shirts on Amazon and yeah. doing a lot of different, you know, income streams and trying them out and then documenting them so that people can like learn from them on my blog. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that was a whole interesting journey. And I'm hoping like I can convince Sean to also, you know, do that again. Yeah. <laughs> in the Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think that I think that would be amazing to watch. So again, you, so you do that for a couple of years, you come back, you get grounded, you get a job, right? Mm -hmm, you get a job mm -hmm. in the tech space. Uh, and uh, we'll kind of fast forward to what really sparked this, this, uh, me reaching out to you. Uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago, you were given notice uh, mm -hmm. that uh, your services were no longer needed, aka a layoff, you, you were laid off this. This is something that unfortunately, I think is going to happen more commonly going forward. Uh, certainly mm -hmm. in the tech space. So um, it happened, right? Yeah. Um, the company was kind of running out of runway. It's like a little startup. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I kind of, you know, had the feeling this was going to be my last job. I already knew it. So it was like not um, a complete surprise. I was just like, all right, like I knew this was, I wanted to be full time into like my brand and everything like that and kind of just like officially retire from the nine to five. Um, so you know, I was already prepared. I already had like passive income streams working for me that, you know, I was actually making more from my stuff than uh, my, you know, my full-time job. So now it's just like, how should I spend my time now? Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of nice. Um, and it's interesting because back in 2018, when I came back to, uh, from Chiang Mai actually to um, the States, I decided, you know, I wanted to learn more and build more impact, create a brand and uh, do something with more purpose. And I remember like when I was in Chiang Mai, like everyone was just chilling, like just trying to cover their minimal expenses and they weren't like doing too much where I, I felt like there's more, mm. um, that I wanted to pursue mm -hmm. and then kind of coming back, I was like, okay, let me, uh, you know, take a job so that I could get better at marketing as well as kind of work on my brand. And then, um, with my brand, I really found that purpose. So now I feel like everything's like aligning where, mm -hmm. um, I'm like, okay, we're going to make some big moves now, now yeah. that that's done, like my job's done. Let's like focus on helping yeah. people become financially free. That is awesome. So let's, let's hit your brand. Cause again, I called it digital nomad, but what is Sharon's brand? Where can people find it? Cause you are all over, are all over the place. Yeah. I mean, it's my full name, Sharon Sung on like YouTube, Instagram, um, TikTok, like Twitter, everything. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, I have been 
thinking about my brand a lot too, because like, I still have my website, my digital nomad quest brand. And I still feel like it's relevant in that, like people who want to travel and become uh, location independent, financially mm -hmm. free and everything like that, they can learn all these strategies to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been toying around like creating a, uh, a brand with me and Sean around just like real estate. So mm -hmm. That will probably be coming in, in uh, the next few months. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're working on that right now. Yeah. So the, the real key of this conversation is, um, for at least for me, layoffs happen, right? And if you're prepared for, meaning you have at least some side hustle money, it, it, it's not as stressful, right? If, if to get mm -hmm. to, as a manager who has unfortunately had to lay off people over decades of different reasons, different, different recessions, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. But when you have those conversations with people who are prepared and have either side incomes or savings, it's a totally different conversation, um, right? Your business didn't have a choice. You, you're running out of runway. Mm -hmm. Money was running, you know, it had to happen, right? They had to make these hard choices. Mm -hmm. um, but you as an individual, you and your husband now, Sean, have the ability to take little bits of money over time and build streams of income. Right? How many streams of income do you think you have today you've built up over the years? I think around like six to seven main ones right now. Yeah. So we have like affiliate marketing, um, you know, course sales, uh, merch by Amazon, Etsy, real estate, um, you know, sponsorships, but that's a little bit more like active income versus passive. Mm. Um, but it's so nice to just have like these income streams because like, um, just, just like you mentioned, people are getting laid off left and right, especially mm. with these times with these uncertain economic times, it's like mm -hmm. you need to have multiple income streams so that you feel secure. You can build wealth um, without depending on, you know, a job. So I'm really grateful that I have these income streams and I, but it's like, I've definitely worked towards it for many years. Oh, purposeful. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's been maybe like seven years in the making of like working on other income streams aside from just my job. So like, this isn't something that you can, uh, do right away. Like, just like, it's not a get rich quick scheme. You have to work on these things, um, for a long period of time, but it's just going to set you up for a lot more peace of mind and stuff like that. I, I, I really want people to hear that. We're going to hit it again, right? A lot of people, whether it's Etsy or YouTube channels or course, anything, they all think it's get rich quick. And it's so there's a lot of social media influencers who are, who paint that vision. It's just mm -hmm. wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. You were able, and again, you were featured in CNBC. There's an article that I saw of you. Was that six months ago, nine months ago? Talking was, about your passive recent. income. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your passive income exceeded your um, W2. Mm -hmm. But that was seven years in the making. Mm -hmm. So, what I'd rather love people to, to do today when we have 3.6% unemployment is I tell people to find their passion, whatever. Like, do you have a hobby or passion that is you? Is it video games? Is it old cars? Is it you know, I don't care what it is, but there's something you could do around that, build a brand, your brand around that widget, that thing. And it could produce hundreds of dollars over the next couple of years into thousands of dollars as it grows. And once you kind of find your thing and you have that brand, you can get extras, whether it's affiliate marketing or branding or it's, it, it but it takes work and time. It's just not, Hey, I got laid off. I'm going to create a brand and I'm making money next week. Right. Yeah. I mean, like this day and age, there's so many opportunities that you can monetize on any type of passion you have. You can create a blog you can create a YouTube channel. Um, and it's so funny when I was, I was kind of looking at my old blog posts uh, the other day and it was so crazy to see just like where I was in the past. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to be so screwed. Like I have to do all these things. Like I have to work really hard. And I was like, uh, I was barely making anything. I was like 50 bucks a month on Etsy. That that's enough for me to like, know that this can work. So it's just crazy to, you know, see the evolution, but it's like, like, I think a lot of people, when they see me now, they think, oh, like you have that, right? Like, it's yeah. like, it's easy, but I'm like, I, I have documentation of like yeah, what I was thinking back you. then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's a, it's such a long process. So I think people need to understand that. Um, but it's, it's also really, a uh, really cool feeling when you start seeing like your first few dollars, like online, yeah. you remember those points, right? So, oh yeah, I do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I went from having nothing, right. I, I had a, as you know, right. I had a mm -hmm. W2 job in a, in a rental portfolio, got to the point where the rental portfolio covered. 
I didn't have social media, no Facebook, no YouTube, no nothing. And then, you know, out of nowhere, create this brand one rental at a time. Now, now I have four or five streams of income over a thousand bucks a month. It's like, Amazing. I don't even know what happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, I just show up and keep doing the work. That's what I'm good at. I'm, I'm not a great visionary, but I, I can execute. So uh, it's, it is You're doing fun. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a lot of fun. What was the first thing was a blog. The first thing you did to kind of, or was it Etsy? What was the first thing you tried to monetize all those years ago? I mean, it was like the blog was started because I was kind of like ranting about like <laughs> being at my job. I was like, you know, is it like, still out there? Could we, could we find it? <laughs> if, if, could you tell us it, where it it's is, at? It is there. I mean, it's digital name at quest.com. If you go from to the like early blog posts, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Still like, there. Don't delete anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's digital nomad quest. All one word. Yeah. Digital nomad quest.com. Like awesome. I was just curious that day. I was just like, I wonder what I wrote. And I was like, it was so eye opening. <laughs> to see. And like, I mean, the way I re like recollect it now, it actually is in line with everything I was saying. I was like, really just like trying to get like trying to leave and trying to see what else was out there. Um, but yeah, I, I started that blog for that purpose. And also I knew I wanted to document this process because, mm -hmm. um, I, I started trying to make money on Etsy, like Kindle books, like every little income stream. And I was like telling people, Oh, this is what happened. And like yeah. it, it actually works. So, yeah. um, so I guess the progression was, uh, you know, blog, but like I was blogging throughout and Etsy right. was like really the one that like started making some money. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I think every income stream that like I pursued, they all work. So mm -hmm. it's just like a matter of what you're passionate about and like what you're good at mm -hmm. and what you're like willing to spend that time on. Yeah. For me, it's, it's it, like, I talk to a lot of full-time employees now and I've tried to get them to think about a side hustle and it's, and, and I want to be very clear. It has never been easier to monetize your hobbies, passions, loves. It's mm -hmm. just not, sorry, stop complaining. Just figure out what it is. And there's a way to monetize that. And, um, and oh, by the way, there's other people have done it. Just go see what they did and repeat it. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's right there for you. So, um, I think you've led by example And the beauty about digital nomad quest and our conversations from way back when is I, I think the initial version of Sharon was very much, I'll call it millennial, maybe Gen Z, go part, you know, go to another country, live cheaply, all of that. But as I've tried to help more and more full-time employees, you know, 40s, 50s, 60 year olds, there's a lot of us, which I include myself in, where that's like the dream, right? I'd love to go live in Chiang Mai for 90 days or Australia or Costa Rica or wherever. I think, I think there's a lot of people that need to hear your message uh, so where else, again, where can they find you to kind of follow along with Sharon? Yeah. So you guys can find me on digitalnomadquest.com, but also like mainly my social media channels. So uh, everything is under Sharon Sung. So YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be, you know, posting a lot of value on there. So go ahead and check that out. And Sung, just so you guys know, it's T-S-E-U-N-G, just so yes. we don't, no misspellings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm going to ask now. So now you get, so how did you take that? Right. Did you get the classic come to the conference room, HR sitting in the corner, Sharon, we have this package for you. How did it, was it a phone call? I mean, how, how did the layoff happen? It was a phone call essentially. Like um, I, it was very unexpected in a sense of, I had no idea it was coming at that time. I sure. knew, I knew I was going to leave or like wait till maybe a layoff or something like sure. uh, with this position, but it's just, I didn't know exactly when. Okay. Um, yeah, but they were cutting costs. They were like laying off of, like a few employees. They were um, removing their office and all mm -hmm. these different things. Um, so they're saying stuff like that. Like it's nothing to do with the performance. It's just, we need to like start yeah. cutting these costs. Um, but it, yeah, it's interesting. Cause you know, um, I had a coworker who was like really panicked about it. And for me, I didn't feel that panic. It was, well, you've been preparing for it, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's it interesting. Cause yeah, when it was, when they told me, I was like, Oh, like it is surprising, but it was like, okay, I'm okay. And I'm like, now it's time to, um, really do big things with, um, you know, with, uh, the brand and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm really excited for actually like the future because, um, there's so much potential with right. like, uh, what we're doing. And I think it's really exciting to grow the community even more and more impact mm -hmm. more people, uh, create more cool stuff. 
like we recently went to this uh, kind of mastermind. We were invited by Teachable and we got to sit with like seven to eight figure creators uh, wow. for like, yeah, for two days. And we just like talked about our businesses, our struggles, and we were all supporting each other, giving each other solutions. Um, and it just opened my eyes like, wow, we have a lot to do because that was just like an amazing mastermind. And I'm like, there's so much potential when you build your own thing. Mm -hmm. Like you can do so much with it. Yeah. So that's where I was going to ask you now. For most people, a layoff is a gut punch and something that 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 frankly hurts. It probably did. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't fun when you when it initially happened. Right. Especially if it caught you by surprise. But once you hung up, maybe the next day you're like, this is awesome. I've got eight, <laughs> 10 hours back every day. Sean, we can do some amazing things. How, how quickly did you pivot from shock to this is awesome? Um, yeah, I think actually like the first day towards the end of the day, I was like, actually, there's so much potential here. It's so exciting. And I, I think that like, I was using the job as a crutch because like, it was kind of the feeling like, oh, like I'm doing well and I don't need to like work extremely hard or anything like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm living a great life. Um, you know, so I, I wasn't like, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess it just, yeah. Right. Like it, it was just like, okay, I have like a lot of stability. It was comfortable. Like a, yeah, it was comfortable. Exactly. It was comfortable. Um, so this kind of throws me in that, like, okay, you should get a little uncomfortable and work a little harder, even though like I could just, you know, spend the rest of my time just like not doing anything if I wanted to. <laughs> right. And that wasn't, uh, one of the, you know, the questions I had, I think mm -hmm. I had multiple feelings of like, okay, I can do a lot more. Um, but then I was also like, do I want to just kind of like enjoy my freedom? Mm. Um, I built, you know, so much, but then I knew that like, I came back from Chiang Mai because, um, you know, I wanted to build more and do more with, yeah. um, you know, like I wanted to be more purposeful. Um, so yeah, so those were the different feelings I had. Um, and it wasn't about like the security part. It was more mm -hmm. like, how should I spend my time essentially? Yeah, I remember, I remember that because I got called into an office to have a discussion and I told my, because I was in sales every year, things changed. And I told the company, I didn't want to do this, this, and this. And then they gave it to me and it's like, well, today's my last day, right? It's over. You don't like me. I don't like you. It's all good. And uh, I remember as I'm walking back to, to pick up like one or two pictures of Olivia from my desk, left everything else there. By the time I got home, I was like, I thought I was just going to chill, right? I'm older than you, obviously, uh, by a couple of decades almost. And I was like, I'm just going to chill out. And mm -hmm. then because I'm type A, that lasted like 48 hours. Yeah. And I don't know if, I don't know if this happened to you. Maybe you don't because you have Sean and, and you have all these other streams of incomes, but Sharon, I'm not against admitting I was getting depressed because mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have something. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So one rental at a time actually pulled me out of the depression. Um, I, it, do, can you imagine being financially free and being depressed? That's who I was for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. I was like, this is no, wrong. I, There's something wrong with this. I totally understand it. Cause I mean, that was probably what I was sort of feeling when I was, sort of like financially free in Chiang Mai. And I was like, I could just like not do anything, but I wanted to do more. And, yeah. and that, yeah, building, you know, I guess like my brand right now, it really like gave me that purpose. Yeah. Um, so totally understand. I feel like anyone who retires early or whatever, they still need to find something to do and something that they're passionate about. Yeah. So I think it's like, I feel like I always say, you know, build passive income, become financially free, and then design your best life. And I put that part in it because I like that. Um, you kind of need to uh, evaluate what you care about. And that's like th the financial freedom is a tool for you to do those things, essentially. Can you give me an example of what would uh, Sharon and Sean's best life? What, what, what does that mean? It's fancy words, but give me an example. I mean, I feel like we're kind of living it in a sense of like, you know, we are just doing what's in line with us. Okay. Uh, we have the freedom to like play video games if we want to, or go to the movies or whatever, but also work on something that like helps people. Um, I think my passion is creating. So like, uh, creating things from nothing and then like having that intersect with being able to help people, but also, um, be passionate about it also make money from it. Like all those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. um, make it. So it's, it's just a, such a great thing that we can do. 
Um, so I guess like our best life is working on stuff we love, like doing cool stuff, uh, mm -hmm. in real estate or in anything else. So like real estate, we're going to try to dabble more into like short-term rentals, um, buying larger multifamily. Mm -hmm. And also like with our brand, we want to create like a private membership group, um, and, you know, possibly like a two, a two month program for people that will open only at certain times. Uh, so we just have a lot of things in the works. Um, but you know, we have that ability to like entertain all these different things because we have the security. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I know you've picked up recently, which I've never done, uh, is out of state investing. Mm -hmm. Um, right. You started it, I think when you were in California, now you live in Texas, uh, still doing out of state. Um, so how's that been? Uh, why out of state? You know, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause that's something that, uh, is pretty, lots of people are very interested in that. Yeah. So when I, you know, started, I was in California, I bought my first one in, uh, Antioch, but like, obviously the prices have gone up a lot <laughs> in like most of the Bay. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that, um, you know, it's really expensive. So it's, easier to invest in, in a more affordable market. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when you're like in this market where you have uh, higher wages, you should be able to leverage that and like invest in other markets essentially. So that's kind of what I was wanting to do. Mm -hmm. So we invested together in Georgia. Um, I have investments in Texas. Uh, Sean has investments in Florida, mm -hmm. but now like we moved to Dallas. So we moved in January and uh, we're planning to do more out here. So actually kind of locally, like in Dallas, okay. we, yeah, we want to buy more like short-term rentals. Um, so we actually recently bought one in uh, Waco. Uh, so two hours away from here. Okay. And yeah. And uh, it is, it's really gross inside. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think I saw the pictures. I think I saw your walkthrough of that a week ago. Yeah, so. it's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> so a, what do you mean? That's an average house I bought. What do you want really bad? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, there was like literally poop in there, like oh, yeah. piles oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've heard that. Yeah. I bought stuff in 2010 after it had uh, been foreclosed for two years. So oh, I saw yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah right. Pretty, yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the project is going to be, it's like we're buying at 65 K and then we're probably going to put in about 35 okay. and then, yeah. So I think it'll be worth around, uh, one thirty one forty. Um, I guess we are actually adding a, another bedroom. So it'll be, it'll increase the value a bit, mm -hmm. um, but we're trying to Airbnb that out too. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the plan with that. And we're kind of excited to, uh, you know, do this more where we're like on site and we can actually like maybe get into the physical labor of it all to create some content around there too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's not happening on my channel. I'm not lifting, a, <laughs> I'm not lifting a hammer or painting anything. I, okay. no, not not going to happen, but I, I will be watching you two do that. That will be fun for me to watch. Uh, if you are going to talk to somebody who's, you know, has a, has their day job, right. Let's, let's, let's assume they're nervous, but secure, uh, and they don't have any side hustles today. How would you coach them? Or what would you ask them to think about to start building the first one? I mean, how do you have that conversation? Hey, I'm nervous. I got a kid or kids and husband, wife. I have my job today, but I don't know how long I'll have it. I want to do a side hustle. What's the first thing you kind of coach them? Yeah. I mean, I think like one of the easiest ones you can start out with is freelancing. So kind of evaluating what you're good at and like mm. going on sites like Upwork and Fiverr. I like um, it. Yeah. So, I mean, Fiverr, you can list gigs about almost anything. So, I mean, people even sing like happy birthday to people and like make money that way. So, you know, there's just so much opportunity there. You can list a bunch of different gigs, um, you know, Upwork. It's a great way to find work as well. Um, so I think like just freelancing would be a good start. Cause for me, when I transitioned to passive income, I mm -hmm. had multiple part-time remote positions in marketing. So I would like design ads for clients or, uh, manage their Facebook ads. So I think like the, the idea of creating passive income streams can be daunting. Um, so that's why, like, I think freelancing is a great like transition, I love that. Uh, but yeah, but when it comes to, um, you know, passive income, I think kind of evaluating like your strengths, your uh, time, your capital and your passions is really important. Um, I kind of always say those different things because some of them take a lot more time than others um, and don't cost that much. Like I would say Etsy and Merch by Amazon, it's like zero to low capital to start, mm -hmm. uh, but it takes time to create a bunch of listings. 
um, get them ranked. And then like YouTube takes a lot of time too to like see revenue. If you're okay with talking about your passions for, mm -hmm. um, you know, a while, like it could take like many years before you can start really making money. So, um, that's, that's kind of why I say evaluate, like, you know, those different things and, de and decide if, you know, uh, like which income stream you want to pursue. So, um, I would say there are a lot of like active positions you can do with like freelancing, but also people like flip items too. Yeah. Like they'll, there's a lot of different creative side hustles you can do to make money right away. But if you don't want to trade that time for money in the future, then you have to look at those passive income streams and mm -hmm. then kind of evaluate like which one makes sense for you based on your personality. Yeah. So I love that audit yourself, know what you have and don't have. And, and for me, it's all about focus. It's certainly in the beginning. It's I, I, I hate it when creators who have made it right, whatever made it means kind of make it look so easy, like, Hey, swallow this pill and money will rain out your ass. I mean, it's, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It takes focus. It takes longer than you want. If you think yeah. it takes three months, it takes six. If you think it takes six, it takes nine mm -hmm. and you have to be consistent. And Oh, by the way, initial momentum is hardest. I have seen some people take on a side hustle and they, they get just a little bit of success going and then they back off. Cause they're like, mm. Like you just get uh, monetized on YouTube, for example, and you get that first month and it's three bucks. And mm -hmm. you're like, what am I going to do with three bucks? I'm like, dude, you just got monetized. Chill out. You're, it's just starting, right? Keep, keep going. Uh, I think a lot of people give up like right on, it's like digging for diamonds, that meme or whatever you see. They're like, it's right there for you. Keep going. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like when I thought of uh, with my Etsy shop or merch by Amazon, it was like every listing is almost like your little rental property online. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people need to think about it that way. Even if it's just like $2, $3, that's passive income and mm -hmm. it can add up so much. So I've always been excited. It's like, Oh, that's recurring income. So, you know, if you can, if you can make it that way, like you can keep growing it and it can become something gigantic. So I don't know, like, yeah, people, people, tend to have those comments, right? They're like, yeah. ah, it's, it's barely anything. Like this is going to take too much time. I give up, but you got to understand like in the future, you don't have to trade your time for money that can yeah. work for you. Yeah. So it is going to be so fun to watch you grow, uh, both you and Sean grow. I, I, I really do think you guys will be out of the country very soon. Just living the digital nomad life. Um, where can people find you or follow you? Cause I think you, you two have an amazing story and your journey is just beginning. Yeah, you guys can find me on, uh, you know, my social media, Sharon Sung um, or digitalnomadquest.com. Uh, I put value on all these different channels. So go ahead and check it out. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sharon. Congratulations. Thanks so much.